Maybe you're a trout fisherman and you want to take your fly fishing game to the next level. Maybe you're going to Cancun on a family vacation and you want to sneak away for a day. Maybe you just got your first Ginu and you want to explore the marsh around Charleston. Maybe you're a second year trout guide from Bozeman and you want to move to the Keys and be a tarpon guide. If any of those sound like you, then you need to watch this video. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome back to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman. Before we get started, I just want to say hugeflyfisherman.com for huge stuff and special.tv slash hugeflyfisherman for video stuff that you can't get on YouTube. Today's video is about saltwater fly fishing tips. It's mostly geared towards beginners, but even if you're experienced, you might be able to learn something from this video. If you're not saltwater fly fishing already, you should be. The fish are bigger and badder and stronger, and people say trout live in cool places. I think saltwater fish live in even cooler places. And if you're a freshwater fisherman and you start learning about saltwater fishing, you're just going to become a better all-around angler. Diversity is good. This video isn't going to be about specific techniques and methods. It's more just general ideas and philosophies. Stuff you want to know before you go. I'm not claiming to be an expert on all things saltwater fly fishing, but I do know a little bit. I've been saltwater fly fishing for about 10 years, and for a guy that lives in the Rocky Mountains, I think I get to do it a fair amount. So I've got a lot to learn still, but I've picked up some things along the way that I want to share with you. Let's start with a big one that maybe you are worrying about, casting. Well, here's the deal. You don't have to cast all that far, but you do have to practice. You might think that you're going to be bombing 80 foot cast for every shot you get, but first of all, let's get real. You can't cast that far. And actually, most of your shots are going to be like 30 or 40 feet. It's pretty reasonable. Sure, sometimes you might have to cast really far, but more often the fish is right under the bow of the boat and throwing the fly is a better option than casting it. That's not a joke, that happens all the time. So sure, it's great if you can cast really far, but if you have a really solid 40 foot cast, we can work with that. What's way more important than how far you can cast is how quickly you can get the fly there. If you're making 17 false casts to get your fly 40 feet from the boat, you need to work on that. Get it down to like two or three. A lot of times your window to give the fly to that fish is only like five seconds long. If your fly's in the air the whole time, it's gonna be tough to catch that fish. The bottom line here is that you need to practice. A lot of you watching this are probably trout weenies and you're used to throwing four and five weight rods all the time. An eight or a nine weight is a lot different. We could talk about casting all day, but I just want to mention one more thing. You have to have a double haul. If you can't double haul, you are at a serious disadvantage. All right, let's talk about sight fishing. A lot of saltwater fishing is sight fishing, which is cool, right? That's always fun. So having a good pair of polarized sunglasses is even more important than usual. You're going to be standing on the bow of the boat all day looking for fish and trying to spot them. If you're not all that good at it, or if your eyesight is bad, just be honest about it and tell whoever's on the back of the boat so that they know what they're working with. All right, let's talk about boats. Saltwater fly fishing is a lot easier and more fun if you're doing it from a boat. If you don't have a boat, maybe a stand-up paddleboard or anything that floats that you can stand up on. Fly fishing from a kayak? Yeah, I don't know about that. I'd rather stand up. I know people do it, but I think it's kind of silly. All you kayak nerds can tell me I'm wrong in the comments, that's fine. And if you don't have a boat or anything that floats, that's fine. You can still do it from shore or by wading. Just know that you might have to work a little harder and don't forget to shuffle your feet so you don't step on a stingray. There's a lot that could be said about how to behave in a boat. I've made a couple of videos on it, but just real quickly, center up and don't rock the boat. Don't slam the hatches and try to keep mud and your fried chicken crumbs out of the boat as best you can. Also boating safety, that's a big one. Maybe for your first saltwater trip, you're hiring a guide. Well, there's two things you gotta do. You gotta watch my video about getting guided and you gotta leave them a good tip. Also, throughout your day, everywhere you stop in the boat, ask your guide, are there any sharks? 
marks here and how deep is it? All right, next item, let's talk about sun protection. Sun protection is important whether you're fresh or saltwater fishing, but I think I get fried more when I'm on the ocean. So cover up, long sleeves, hood, buff if you don't mind looking like a nerd, and don't forget sunscreen on all of your exposed skin. Don't forget the tops of your feet and underneath of your nose right there. Let's talk about weather and clothing. We just talked about sun, but what if you get rained on or what if you even get snowed on? I've been known to bring ski goggles in the skiff. Most likely you're gonna get rained on and get wet, but even if it's 80 degrees out, you can still get hypothermia. Have good quality rain gear and it's not a bad idea to bring a spare change of clothes. When you fall out of the boat, you will know why. As far as footwear, all you oil guys from Houston, leave your loafers at home and go buy some soft sole shoes from the fly shop. The fly shops love you guys. If you're new to saltwater fishing, you're probably going to have to learn some new terminology. You probably already know what nervous water is, but you're going to have to learn up light and down light, up sea and down sea, the difference between tide and current. You'll have to know what a head wake is, or if you're having a really tough day tarpon fishing, you're probably going to learn what a lean is. One thing you're going to see a lot of when you're saltwater fishing is mullet. You're going to think it was a redfish, but no, that was mullet. If you're new to saltwater fishing, one thing you'll have to get used to is rinsing off your gear at the end of the day. Saltwater is very corrosive and hard on your gear. If you're not rinsing it, it's going to get ruined. Just clean it off. Your mom would be proud. If you're new to saltwater fishing and you're doing it on your own, you're going to have to learn a whole lot about tides and how it affects the fish. When you're learning your local area, there are going to be a lot of nuances. Just because the fish were here on an incoming tide does not mean that they will be there on an outgoing. You're going to have to be able to find fish at high and low tide. Go exploring, look at stuff, try to find new things. That is how you learn spots. You don't learn spots by following guides out of the marina. You got that? That is for chumps. One thing you're gonna have to learn to do if you're a saltwater fly fisherman is you're gonna have to look down your nose at trout wings. You're in the big leagues now. Who cares if they can make sweet aerial mens or they caught 38 fish euro nymphing? You're a saltwater fisherman. You just caught a bone fish. I've got a foot in both worlds. Trust me, saltwater fishing is way cooler. Another thing you'll have to learn if you're gonna be a saltwater fly fisherman is to relax and stay calm. I struggle with this one all the time. Things are happening very quickly. Someone's talking to you over your shoulder. You're trying to get your fly out there as best you can and you make a bad cast and you blow the shot. You defeated yourself mentally or that's what happens to me anyway. It can be very difficult but try to relax and stay calm. And lastly, don't beat yourself up over those blown shots. It's not a big deal. You'll get plenty more chances to mess it up. Instead, you could analyze what happened and why you blew that shot and learn from it, or you can just crack a beer and wait for the next fish. And we're gonna be done now. If you have a good saltwater fly fishing tip that I didn't cover, please leave a comment so that other people can learn. I'll be back as soon as I can with another huge fly fisherman video for you. Until then, don't forget to wear your kill switch and stay huge. Rex, good luck in Florida, buddy. I'm rooting for you.